Now then, there are two things that are in abundance in Borderlands. Bosses and legendary gear. Unfortunately, getting all of the legendaries, or at least the ones that you want, is a bit tricky because the majority of stuff are world drops. You could be killing bosses, doing side quests, circle of slaughter, even just digging through rubble and you may find a legendary. But it becomes very difficult to get the ones that you want because there's almost 200 legendaries in the game. But one thing that not a lot of people really know actually is that each of the 15 bosses, for the most part at least, drop a unique legendary that you can only get from them. There are a few exceptions, but in this video we're going to go over all of the bosses in the main story from start to finish. Just as a PSA, of course there's going to be story spoilers because of that. Go over the unique legendary that each of them drop, talk about whether it's good or not, and generally is the farm worth your time. Hey, sorry to interrupt randomly, I may sound a little bit different. I recorded this video before I went away to Philadelphia, but of course there was a hotfix that did change the strength of some of these weapons. In the comments, I've wrote down a full list of all of the stuff that's different from the video to what I'm saying. I'm not gonna re-edit the audio or anything like that, so just general stuff like the King and Queen's Call is a little bit weaker than it shows on screen. The Storm Sniper Rifle is a little bit better. The Rampage and Troy don't 100% drop their legendaries all of the time anymore. And there's other bits and pieces like the Lead Sprinkler being a little bit stronger and stuff. Like I said, I'll go through all of them in the comments below. But just so you know, some of this audio is just going to be wrong at this point. Sorry about that. Very little I can do in this scenario. But back to the video. A huge shout out to Tony DML and also Ezrael, Fatman XXL and Light Shadow LX. The compiled all of the legendary drops that allowed me just to sort of cross-reference what gear is unique to each of the bosses. You can check the full spreadsheets in the description below. But let's go over each of the bosses in the story, starting with Mouthpiece. Shiv, right at the start of the game, doesn't drop anything unique, so you don't need to worry about him. But of course, once you get to the Holy Broadcasting Center, you will come across Mouthpiece, you're seeing it on screen, and he actually drops two weapons. We're not going to be talking about the blue uniques at all, or any form of epics, it's just the legendaries, and he drops the Mind Killer. We'll show a little bit of gameplay of the Mind Killer on in the background, as well as the other guns as we go through them. I did want to mention as a PSA though, try to ignore the damage that some of them do. I'll point out the ones that are like level 27 guns as opposed to level 50, but just sort of ignore the damage that they do. It depends on the mayhem modes and the modifiers as well, but I would recommend that you get this weapon, or at least farm it a little bit. Not because the weapon itself is amazing, it's sort of middle of the pack. It's not as good as the Hellwalker, which was the other shotgun that I was using. Because it's not an elemental shotgun, it doesn't provide too much, but it has a decent magazine size, and it does a fair amount of damage too. If you want some physical, this is pretty good, to be fair. It doesn't really do too much exciting, so it's more of a thing to get and maybe put on the wall, as it is the first legendary that you should come across in the game. Not to mention that the area is amazing, I love that, I love fighting Mouthpiece, so i definitely go farm it. It's a nice experience at least, especially on the higher Mayhem levels. We leave Pandora for the time being, don't worry, we're heading back, and we move on to Gigamind, which you can find in the Meridian Metroplex. Most of you know where it is, you've done the story. He still drops a legendary SMG that you can't get anywhere else. The Smart Gun XXL. It does corrosive damage and as you throw it, it turns into little robot brain sentries that run around and do a little bit of damage. But the impact of the actual gun itself isn't great. It isn't amazing. It's fine for what it is. If you want a nice chill corrosive weapon to run, especially early game when you don't have a lot of legendaries yourself, you can get this, but you can't get it in other forms of elements, which I think sucks. And the damage is fairly tame. If you want a really good corrosive weapon though, it's a pretty good place to start. It's a TDR, it's nice, doesn't require too much and the farm for Gigamind is definitely recommended. He of course drops his weapon, you can't get it anywhere else, that's the point of this video you know, but he does drop a lot of world drops too, so if you don't want to farm the likes of Trant or Grave Warden, then this is a really good farm to be fair, so I'd recommend that. For the first two, you probably already knew that. You'd probably grinded out those bosses and worked that out, however, once we get into these next few bosses, this is where there's a lot of misconceptions. First of all, Captain Tron on a Phoenix, as much as I love him, doesn't drop any uniques to him. He does drop a lot of world drops though, so he's great for farming, if you could be asked, basically. But he doesn't drop anything specific, so we're going to pass over him and move on to Katagawa Ball. Again, this is one where I've seen in a couple of places that he specifically drops the Hex Grenade, and as far as I can tell, that's not necessarily true. He does, though, drop the Tsunami, which is another SMG. Would I recommend farming for this weapon? The weapon itself, not really. The Tsunami isn't 
that exciting. It is a melee one weapon, so it has that really odd and awful wind up time to start firing, which makes it very slow and unresponsive in that regard. But it does fire out an assortment of elements as you're seeing on screen. That's kind of its unique perk, but it does mean you don't have any control of what element that you're firing out at any time, making it a bit of a novelty more than anything. I wouldn't really recommend good to try and farm this weapon unless you're a collector and you want them all. But Katagawa, again, is a pretty good boss farm if you fancy it and just want to vary it up a little bit. It's really easy to get to him as well as the elevator all the way down to where he is actually works as opposed to the mission where you have to go a long way around. So that is a big plus if you want to farm Katagawa ball. Going to Atlas HQ, we of course have the final showdown with Katagawa. And this is a boss where he doesn't actually have a unique, but it kind of does. His main drop is the Storm which is a sniper rifle. This is also a world drop, but according to Ezreal on their spreadsheet, there's a higher increased rate of this drop in from Katagawa Jr. if you want to. The unique perk to this weapon is that it doesn't really fire out normal bullets. Instead, it fires out these big electric clouds that do damage against opponents that are nearby. If they have a lot of shields, then this weapon isn't too bad. This was a level 20 version of the storm that I had. Like I said, this could drop from anywhere, but it has more of a chance of dropping off Katagawa Jr. I did try and farm Katagawa Jr. for a bit, and I could have done it for a bit longer, but the boss battle is incredibly frustrating to try and do it quickly. He's jumping around, constantly regening his shield. It just makes it awful to sort of fight against, and I got really fed up and stopped. But going off all of the spreadsheets and people talking about the storm, it seems that consistently this does drop from Katagawa Jr., but it can drop around the world. So my honest advice is to just hope you get it in the world, unless you really, really want this weapon. It has some form of merit, but I don't think it's amazing. So I wouldn't recommend farming Katagawa Jr. at all. But the perk on it's pretty cool. It's just another Maliwan weapon with a charge up time and there's better options out there. Finally, as we close out Promethea, we of course run into the Rampager that drops the Quadimizer. It's one of those drops that seems to happen every single time that you kill him for everybody. So it's not too difficult to kill him to pick one up. But the question is, is it worth it at level 50? The Quadimizer, whilst it's a really beautiful gun, it has this effect where it fires out in three waves. The first being radiation, then corrosive, then fire. And it does a good amount of damage, but I think heavy weapons as a whole are kind of behind everybody else. If you want that big explosive damage, then Quadimizer isn't a bad shout, especially if you want various elements thrown in there. But other legendary heavy weapons like the Hive just tend to be on average a little bit better. Of course, the thing about this is no matter how many times you do the Rampager boss, they will 100% drop this so you don't really need to worry about farming him too long to get it just might be worth doing that boss once at level 50 getting a level 50 version and then having that handy so that's a good thing you don't need to spend too long farming it moving on to eden 6 yes even the warden boss right at the end of the anvil drops his own unique legendary which is the freeman and if you didn't notice this of course is a half-life reference and it's also a very cool atlas rocket launcher the right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. It's a pretty good saying, and this is a really cool heavy weapon that I actually thought was a lot better than I first anticipated. It's the one that was shown in one of the very early trailers for Borderlands 3, where you're aiming the missile goes as you're seeing on screen. And also, as you'll see a little bit later into this gameplay, you have a pretty strong fire rate, and you can fire out a consistent barrage of all of these. The damage is pretty good. I'd say it's one of the better heavy weapons that you can get. But like I mentioned, for the Quartermizer, heavy weapons as a whole much like snipers are kind of behind on the likes of shotguns pistols and assault rifles i would recommend getting it it took me a couple of goes to find it but it's a really cool weapon and i actually really like the atlas guns in this game I think they're all really good. Billy the Anointed also drops a unique, but much like Katagawa Jr., it is a world drop, but is more likely to drop fighting Billy than anybody else. But you have a higher chance versus Anointed. Spent a bit of time trying to farm, but didn't end up getting a updated lead sprinkler. So I was running around with a level 21 one, hence why it wasn't doing much damage in the gameplay. But it's a pretty cool effect. It's just a shame that, again, it's not elemental. To be fair, it is Jacob, so that's kind of expected. But you do have this nice AoE splash damage going on, which is part of its purpose saying splish splash it's okay again there's pretty good assault rifles out there in comparison that i would recommend over this one but if you like jacob's weapons and you like doing a little bit more aoe damage there's a strong chance that you'll end up getting this somewhere on eden 6 or specifically against any anointed targets but like i mentioned billy the anointed has a much higher chance of dropping it if you wanted to specifically farm for it but it's okay as a weapon itself there's better options Moving to the voracious Canopy and Genevieve, she drops her own shield, the Messy Breakup. 
The effect that you get is that you are accompanied by a little drone, like you've seen on screen, that will fire at enemies dealing a certain amount of damage. When your shield breaks, another drone appears coming to your aid. It's pretty cool, the shield health for me was pretty decent, and I also thought that the drones added a little bit too. I could imagine it was Zane running your own sentinel, then having two drones running around with you. It's pretty cool. I don't know if it's anything more than a gimmick to be fair, but I think that this is one that's definitely worth farming just to have it because it's pretty cool. Nice little thing to use if you wanted to. It took me quite a while to farm it off Genevieve, but she isn't a difficult boss to farm. It's just again getting all the way to the end of the ship in order to farm her. Just bring a shock weapon for the shield and a corrosive weapon for the armor and you're golden. That's not the only shield that you're able to get on Eden 6. The next fight that you have is Aurelia in the Black Barrel Cellars, and she drops the Frozen Heart Shield. The shield from Aurelia took me the longest to farm. I spent about half an hour trying to get it off her, I think even a bit longer, and I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're trying to complete all of the legendaries like I am. It's really not that good. It felt inconsistent with how much it worked. For those that don't know, the effect is on screen. You have a Cryonova dealing damage when your shield is broken, and you also gain 30% of that damage returned as health. So it's quite good to survive some of the damage coming in, but I don't know if there's a cooldown on it. It seems to be the case, but it didn't seem consistent with what it was doing. If you're running a Zane build based around Cryo, then this might be the better option, but I think stuff like the Rough Rider gives you more options in a build. This, again, just doesn't provide enough that I would realistically recommend it in a lot of cases, unless there's one specific build that I'm not thinking of at the moment. Finally, you have the Vault Monster, the Grave Ward, that drops two legendaries actually. The Grave and the Ward. But in any case, these are the two that you can get from this. And of course, Grave Ward is amazing for farming if you want world drop legendaries too. We'll start with the first part of his name, Grave, which is the legendary artifact, where you have increased melee weapon and splash damage based on how low your health is. This works really well with Moe's, when you have the build that's all about reducing your health to a certain amount, but gaining shields instead. So the Grave pairs up really nicely with that. There is the Deathless artifact, which I think is a little bit better for her, but if you don't have that, this is a good backup option. Option, or any build really that reduces your health. There's a lot of synergy that could be made with that. And then you have the shield the ward, which is the same, but for shields. Now the issue is a lot of the stuff that reduces your shields are shields themselves, like Rough Rider. So it's very difficult to make synergy happen with the ward. It's just really good if you're running around like me, like an utter Papega, always dying, always being fairly low on health. So if that's you, you can make a lot of use out of running both the grave and the ward together to do additional damage, melee damage, the like. You can do quite a lot there. So these aren't bad options but if you've been farming grave ward quite a lot like most people have been there's a strong chance that you have both of these already this is when we go back to pandora pain and terror and the agonizer 9000 don't actually drop a legendary at all they just drop a epic rocket launcher the agonizer 1500 which fires the free saw blades as you know but troy calypso we kind of know what he drops because much like the rampager boss he drops it all of the time i think the double penetrating occultist the only way you can control people is to lie to them. You've seen the gun on screen, it does a lot of damage. It's of course incendiary, so it's really good against flesh, but the projectile is slow. You don't have a lot of ammo in your gun. And you can sort of see it on screen, there's just better pistol options that you could be running around with. I'm pretty sure that every single time that you kill Troy, this drops, so that's good. So you don't need to worry about farming him too much. As a boss, he's not as bad as he was on the first go, he does get a lot easier, and he does have phases where he becomes immune. So it's fair to say I didn't spend too much time farming legendaries off of Troy. Darting over to Necrotefeo, I just wanted to say that General Tron doesn't drop anything either, much like his brother, feels bad man. I hope the General Haunt in the Halloween event drops more than us two, but now we have got finish with Tyrant Calypso that has two drops, both of them incredibly good. King's Call and Queen's Call. Let's go over King's Call first. Tyrene is a pretty decent farm to be fair at Mayhem 3 when you're fighting her. Really easy to get to her. You have an ammo machine right outside the door for her as well. So you could just keep fighting over and over again without worrying too much. You're not having to climb across the map like you are with Katagawa Ball or whatever. But she drops the King and Queen's Call. King's Call, life is ours, we live it our way. You can get this in assortment of elements. I think everything about these guns are the same though. You can see them on the screen being compared. They're both the same damage. They have the same perk. Critical hits return three bullets to your magazine. A Ricochet's three bullets at the nearest enemy. Of course, it's synergized really well with Flak, with Fadeaway, 
constantly critting, does a lot of damage against bosses. This is the best unique legendary that you can get from bosses, I think, so definitely get Famine Tyrene to get either one of them. In fact, you kind of want to be getting one of each of the elements, I think, just to have in your bag, I think. I have one that's fire, radiation, as you're seeing on screen, but also shock. So having those three elements, I think for the most part, is going to do me really well. So invest in that. Again, she's really not that hard to fight. And she drops all sorts of different legendaries, so I would recommend that for sure. If I had to put them in an order from best to worst, I would definitely say that King and Queen's Call are the best weapons that you could farm from Tyrene Calypso at the end. Next up, I'd say Freeman is really good to be farming off of the Warden. It's a really cool weapon to mess about with. Below that, I'd say Occultist. Whilst it's slow and a bit cumbersome, it is also very strong. Below that, we have the Mind Killer, the first legendary that you get off Mouthpiece. Below that, we have the Storm Gun. Whilst it's slow, it is Maliwan and a bit of a bitch to get a hold of. It has a good effect against anything with shields. Followed up by the Smart Gun XXL. It depends if you need a corrosive weapon or not. The Lead Sprinkler, which is still okay. The Quartermizer, which there's better options for. And lastly, the Tsunami was just, again, a bit of a pain to get and not really worth the time invested. In regards to shields, there's only three. Grave is the best from Grave Ward. Messy Breakdown is good from Genevieve. And Frozen Heart, unless you're building a specific build, isn't really worth your time from Aurelia. And there's only one artifact that you can get that is from Grave Ward. That's the ward, so probably worth getting. But again, you're more likely farming Grave Ward at this point anyway. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and let me know below if you would like me to go over all of the rare mobs, all of the other quests, all of the other areas that you can get legendaries that you're not sure on yet. I'm going away to Philadelphia for a couple of days so I can't do that video straight away, but I'll do my best to get it done as soon as I get home. Thanks for watching, take care, see you soon.